is same-sex attraction in and of itself sinful? I think this is a common question that comes up. If you could address that, that'd be great. Thank you. So glad that you are able to engage with these topics. Thank you for submitting questions. And um, I say that having seen some of the questions, and they're hard. So I, I, I say thank you through gritted teeth um, with some of those. <laughs> Uh, that, that first question is very, very significant, and it, it's, not, it's, it's sort of on topic for, for this evening, but certainly, uh, as I was mentioning earlier, talking about same-sex attraction being part of my own journey, what I was meaning by that was, um, as a teenager, I became increasingly aware of romantic and sexual feelings towards other men, uh, became a Christian then when I turned 18, and so then a significant part of my discipleship was what does it mean to bring those experiences under the Lordship of Jesus Christ. And obviously a, a key part of that is, is honouring the teaching of Jesus about the, the godly and appropriate place for sex being within the covenant of a, of a marriage between a man and a woman. So I, I knew I would have to, to, um, to say no to those desires in order to be a faithful follower of Jesus. Um, is same-sex attraction a sin, sounds like it, it, it only requires a monosyllable to answer it, and I hate answers that always begin with, well, Webster's defines, but we, we need to be very clear on what we mean by attraction. Um, some people use the word attraction to mean the capacity, what some people would call the orientation. Is it a sin to have the capacity to be attracted to people of the same sex? And I would say on that issue, I don't think it is a sin. Um, all of us will experience certain forms of, of temptation. Virtually all of us will experience certain forms of sexual temptation. Uh, we don't tend to choose the particular form temptation takes. What is our responsibility is how we respond to temptation. And the Bible is very clear that we need to, we need to flee sexual sin. So the Bible makes a distinction between temptation and sin. Jesus in the Lord's Prayer says, deliver me from temptation, but forgive me from, you know, forgive us for our sins. So that the experience of being tempted is not in and of itself a sin. It is, however, a reflection of the fact that we have a fallen nature, that we're even tempted in these ways is a sign that we are, we're not the way we're meant to be. Uh, that we have the capacity to be tempted, in that sense, is a sign that we're fallen. The temptation itself is not a sin. If we indulge the feeling, even only within the privacy of our own minds, that is a sin. Uh, Jesus says in Matthew 5, that if someone looks with lustful intent, he's committed sexual sin in his heart. So it's not enough to say, well, I've got the feelings, but I'm not physically acting. Jesus says, actually, if we are mentally acting... That is a sin. So temptation isn't a sin, but indulging feelings and fantasies, looking with a certain intent, is a sin. So even before we've begun to physically do anything, we've already committed a sin. And by the way, that teaching of Jesus convicts every single one of us. Every single one of us is a sexual sinner. And it's the flip side of, of something good, that Jesus regards your sexual integrity as being so precious that it is not to be violated even in the privacy of someone else's mind. And theirs is so precious, it's not to be violated in the privacy of your mind. All of us have fallen very, very far short of that. Well, I hope that yeah. answers the question. 